Right, morning, morning. Welcome all and welcome back to Sally. Missing in action for a really long time. So good to have you back on board and uh, welcome to everybody else. Trevor, yeah, we did miss you, believe it or not. Uh, so <laughs> some, some may, uh, yeah, some may say otherwise, but uh, you know, it's the uh, topic for your return is absolutely perfect. So, you know, it's, it's all about vicious cycles. So you were gone for a week, now you're back. It's another cycle. It's uh, whether it's going to be vicious or not depends on who gets in your way, I suppose. And uh, uh, we'll have to see where it takes us from there. So, Lee, what 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 is all this vicious cycle stuff got to do with wisdom's chats? And uh, what are we what are we focusing on this morning? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ivan. So, for those of you who weren't here, it came out of a conversation um, that we had on Friday. And, and it ended up, we were talking about the interaction between humans and animals. And then um, Ivan started talking about the fact that we manage animals. Oops. Is it me that's gone or is it Lee that's gone? Everyone else still with us? Yeah, I think it's Lee that's gone. Okay. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still with you. Yeah, maybe our, our power utility friends is one of those vicious cycles we're having to deal yeah. with at the moment with the, with the power going going off on a fairly regular basis at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Lee might have been bumped by uh, our good old friends at ESCOM there. So, yeah, we were talking about, uh, she was talking about uh, what we were talking about on Friday, which was uh, our interaction with animals. And uh, she mentioned that I was chatting about you know how we've put ourselves in a position where we have to we have to manage animal populations in in the national parks and things like that and uh, um you know what's happened with um for example the elephants uh, you know when when uh, the population starts to get out of hand they destroy the environment because we've contained them in an in unnatural uh place and and then you know the park wants to go and uh, cull to to solve the problem and and then of course uh, all sorts of people throw up their hands in absolute horror and shock and say, no, you can't do that. You've got to do something else with them. You know, why don't you just move them? And of course, it's a lot simpler than it. I mean, it's a lot harder than it sounds. Uh, you know, to start moving elephants around the place is, uh, is an interesting challenge on its own. But uh, so, yeah, I think that was where she was heading with the intro. Uh, it's not, not really the subject that we were focusing on. So I think it was really about, you know, what are vicious cycles? How do we deal with them? How do we get out of them? Um, and, uh, and, you know, what, what, I suppose generally just what are our thoughts around that? So Ed, I've rambled enough. I'm going to pop across to you and see, uh, see what vicious cycles you have on your mind this morning. Yeah. Originally I didn't think I had much to say, and then I sort of have a thought about it and you're probably going to have to shut me up. Um, I think we all know what a vicious cycle is, but I, I, I looked up on the internet. And it says a sequence of reciprocal cause. And I think the reason I did that was so I had some fancy words. Um, a sequence of reciprocal cause and effect in which two or more elements intensify and aggravate each other, leading inexorably to a worsening of the situation. And I suppose if you think about it, depression is a very good example, you know, because a person has negative thoughts about themselves, the world and the future. And then those negative thoughts breed more negative thoughts and, and they disappear into a downward spiral. And really often the only way out is through an external intervention. So it might be sort of you know, one of the talking therapies or it might be drugs. Um, there was an interesting bit in the news this morning actually about how they think um, psychedelic drugs might kind of rejig the brain so that the talking therapies can work better. But I wanted to focus on, on poverty um, and, and the vicious cycle of poverty. And I just wanted to give an example. You know, um, we talked about electricity just now. In, in the UK, we don't have uh, power cuts and actually you, you, they're not allowed to cut your power off. Um, but if you get behind with your, your electricity payments and, you, and, and you're perhaps late a couple of times, they put you on a prepayment meter and the tariff is higher than the normal tariff. So you struggle to pay that, which means you've got less money for food. So when you go into the supermarket, you buy a smaller packet rather than the larger packet. 
And of course, the smaller packet costs more per kilogram or whatever it is. So you're paying more for your food. So now you're paying more for your electricity and more for your food. The insurance renewal comes up on your car. You can't afford to pay it in one go. So you pay it in installments and that's expensive. So you're paying more for your insurance, you're paying more for your food, you're paying more for your electricity. And then perhaps the car breaks down, you need it for work, so you need to get it repaired. So you have to take out a loan. Well, your credit score's bad, so if you can get a loan from the normal sources, guess what, it's more expensive. But you probably can't get a loan from the normal sources, so you go elsewhere, and they're eye-wateringly expensive. So you're paying more for everything. Uh, and then it's, you then don't put the heating on because you can't afford to pay the bills. And your home gets damp and you get mold. And that causes health problems, asthma, lung problems, etc. So you then can't work as much. You maybe miss a few days at work. So you're earning less and you're paying more for everything. And then it's not just you that suffers, it's your children as well, because although education in the UK is free, you've got to pay for the uniform and the sports kit and all that sort of stuff. So you choose the cheapest school. And then the kids don't go on so many school trips and they don't do so much sport because you can't take them to the matches, you can't buy that pair of football boots. So the kids suffer and they get picked on because they haven't got the latest stuff. And then of course, COVID comes along and you've got home education and with no laptop, no internet connection, and the kids suffer some more. And then because of COVID, you lose the job you're doing in the evening. Perhaps you did bar work in the evening to, to, to make it. So you're going down in this cycle and this cycle and, and there's no way out. You just, it's, it, it, it's not a, a cycle, it's a vortex. And there's no way out. And it's the same for poor countries. Poor countries stay poor countries because they haven't got the capital to access their resources. So foreign countries provide that capital and suck all the wealth out of the, the country. And I think the only way to break those vicious cycles is through outside interventions, genuine help from the state or others for people and genuine help for countries. And we've seen it in a small way in the, in the European Union. The smaller European Union countries have benefited from being part of the union because the richer countries have helped them out. Um, but it's not very good. And I'll use an example. Cornwall used to be one of the richest parts of the UK. And then the coal mines closed and we become one of the poorest parts of the UK. And in 2000, we got a 350 million pound um, loan. I think that's, well, times it by 20 and you get that in Rand. Um, so 350 million pounds, not loan, it was, a, it was a grant from the EU because wages in, in Cornwall are 75% of the national average. And then in 2007, we received a 415 million pound grant under a different fund, they changed the name of the fund. The first one was called um, Objective One, and the second one was called the Conversions Program. And we got that 415 million because wages in Cornwall are 75% of the national average. And then in 2014, we received over 500 million pounds from the EU under the European Development Fund. Because guess what? Wages in Cornwall are 75% of the average for the country. So there we have it. Seven year cycles, which achieved absolutely nothing. They didn't change anything except their name. And I think you know, the majority of those projects in Cornwall were run by companies and organizations outside of Cornwall, which is where most of that grant money actually went. And then, um, the UK government is going to replace the, the, the EU grants with uh, payments from a thing called the Shared Prosperity Fund. I've got a pretty good idea where that uh, prosperity is going to end up. So I think, you know, vicious cycles really, really are hard to break.
you know. But they reckon that once you become poor in, in our country, or my country, you're condemned to three generations of poverty on average. Um, so I think we need some really, and I, and I haven't mentioned the cures. I think we have discussed some of the cures in these forums, like universal basic income uh, and, and other ways of helping people by encouragement, by uplifting them. But I, I don't think those are going to work, not because they're not good solutions, but because no one's prepared to move out of the normal cycle of things and do something different. So that's my thoughts. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, it is. You know, and I think as, as you've indicated with your with your your story there, you know, if you maintain the status quo, you don't actually change the situation, do you? So, you know, you can keep on pumping money into Cornwall uh, the way you've, it's been happening over, you know, the last three tranches that you've got. And guess what? The situation ain't going to change because uh, you just, you just, you know, you're just repeating repeating a process that hasn't worked in the past. So, you know, I think that that's really for, for me, you know, where I'd like to see us taking this this morning is how do we break those cycles? How, you know, what are, what are the things that we can really do to, again, and I think many, many times, you know, on, on this forum, we've spoken about, you know, things have to start with, with me as an individual, with, you know, with one person, someone's got to start somewhere and, and, and start to look to break those, uh, those particular cycles. So, Trevor, you've had a week away to sit and think and cogitate. Is your brain still operating? Have you gotten out of that fantastic cycle of uh, having a week off? So, <laughs> uh, The salt water is infused into the brain cells. Um, but I'm just wondering who fed Ed some meat over the last week? Uh, what's changed, for goodness sake? All of a sudden, money is important in life and economies and all of this sort of thing. Jeez, the communist has turned bad. Um, right. You know what? Uh, when, I saw, uh, when I heard this morning that you were talking about uh, vicious cycles or vicious circles, I actually couldn't get my head around it. Um, so as uh, Ed would expect, uh, I decided to change the topic into virtuous circle uh, <laughs> because I think this is just a natural phenomenon um, that uh, I was almost thinking um, it was so easy. I mean, I woke up this morning about 3.30, uh, really intending to get on board communications with people in New Zealand and Australia, um, managed to boil up a cup of uh, coffee and uh, my regular jungle oats. And as I was about to plug in, quack, uh, guess what happened? Eskom load shed us at four o'clock and it only came back on at about 20 to eight this morning. I didn't think I was going to be able to connect. And I thought to myself, you know what? Um, this is such a convenient excuse to turn around and say, ah, stuff it, man. Uh, Eskom have pulled the plug, so I'm not going to do anything today. Uh, in fact, I think I'll go back to where I was in the past week uh, on the beach, I'll, I'll bring up a little picture so you can have a look at uh, where we were. Uh, and, and what I recognize in, in myself is that it's so easy to use a vicious cycle or something that deflates you uh, as an excuse not to actually overcome the challenge that is being presented by uh, that particular challenge. Um, and, and, and I recognize that in myself, it is uh, that, that I'm one who's generally upbeat most of the time. <clears throat> but I was almost ready to turn around and say, okay, what a fantastic excuse just to turn around and say, oh, no, stuff it. I'm not plugging in the laptop today and connecting with anyone. Uh, it's all Eskom's fault. Um, and I'm really not going to go to work because the traffic is terrible. Uh, I hate to tell you what the traffic was like uh, trying to get back here from Durban uh, to, to Joburg. Uh, I think it's absolute chaos uh, trying to drive through this traffic. Who wants to do it? That's why I'm happy with Zoom and I'm trying to get my partners 
to think more about zooming on a global scale and making certain that uh, our virtuous circle is about reminding people all around the world um, that we have enormous value in what it is that we're doing in the brands that we're building um, and that we've got to share this with as many people around the world as possible. Now, let me get Ed back to the point because they're going to tell me I'm going off uh, astray on topic. And, and that is the way to break a vicious cycle is to break it, to step out of it, to actually recognize that you're actually in it and to move away and talk to others uh, who are not in it uh, about how to move it uh, move away from that uh, vicious cycle, the downward spiraling vortex that it was talking about. Uh, and uh, once you move out of it, then you can actually see what's going on and perhaps take some steps uh, to start climbing upwards instead of um, being swallowed up by this vortex that's going to spit you out of the drain uh, into the sewerage of life. Oh, okay. Uh, you can see where, where I'm going. But virtuous cycle is what came to my mind when this topic of vicious cycle came up. My mind just couldn't handle the topic of vicious cycle. I was immediately flipping to look for the upside rather than the downside. But thanks, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, the, I think that is that is the challenge, isn't it? Is the, to be able to, to recognize that you're in that and be to, to find the mechanism to try and break out of it. So, Sally, what a topic to come back on. <laughs> it is, wow. Um, okay, so um, my thoughts on, on Vicious Cycle. So um, I, I enjoyed um, Ed's, uh, his story and I love Trevor's sort of the, the flipping around of it. Um, so I, um, I've got a history um, of, uh, of depression um, and that is absolutely, um, a, a, I think a really, really good example of a vicious cycle. Um, vicious also, as like Trevor said, not being like nasty, but vicious in, you know, we want to flip it around in terms of what we can do differently. So in my um, sort of um, experience is that the only way to stop, to stop actually everything is to just, is to step out of it. And it all, and Ivan, I agree with you when you say um, it starts with each, each person must take responsibility and accountability for themselves. Um, and that is absolutely what 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 I do think is that um, because it's it, especially depression, it's a it's a really it's a hard cycle to break. And the thing is, sometimes you just got to stop. You just got to stop. You just got to let everything go and take a step back and work your way up. So um, Albert Einstein, um, he says that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And I absolutely agree with that um even in if, if i'm looking just in um in my own business um you know so, you know you, you got to tweak your different you're gonna you got to make um tweaks to your strategy make tweaks to this see what works see because it, it's not going to help that you that you do the same thing over and over and tire yourself out and hit that brick wall you got to step out and say so stop and start again in a different direction that's that's my thoughts great thanks Sally. yeah and i agree absolutely you know it's uh, uh nothing ain't going to change if you don't start uh changing so jasper up and out take us out of this vicious cycle <laughs> uh well i don't know if i can take you out but i will oscillate between ed and trevor so uh uh I fully concur with uh, Ed's description of how uh, the agreement with the current thinking can can suck you into a vortex. I, th I, I don't know how to, I might misquote it, but some someone said oh, on one of the Facebook uh, little things that there are now two clearly defined groups of people. Uh, those who believe the propaganda and go along with it, and uh, those who see it for what it is. 
Um, so the reality is, so, and then uh, Trevor uh, flipped it with saying, how do we break the cycle? And uh, well, that brought me to my favorite topic is you have to change mindset. Uh, because if people stay in the same mindset, uh, they will keep doing the same things, which is what Sally said. Uh, so how do you change mindset? And I, then we come back to the old problem. People don't know what they don't know. So until you uh, demonstrate or expose them to possibilities, uh, and I think that's what uh, a lot of the work that you do in, in Wisdoms is, is show people what are alternatives. Because... Uh, most people are not really exposed to uh, other alternatives, and then they feel uh, trapped in their hopelessness. And then you can react in two ways: you can, uh, uh, you know, accept it and go with the flow, um, or you just become quite desperate and go into a state of paralysis and trying to make the pain as as bearable as possible. And I think most people live their lives in that state of quiet desperation. So uh, I think I think that the challenge out there is, is how to challenge people when they uh, throw you their old excuses, like Trevor said, ESCOM. I mean, we're all affected by it. I mean, there's chaos here in our office with computers going down, uh, messing up programs, uh, uh, but you, you have to work around it because we're not going to change ESCOM. But uh, maybe I can find alternatives not to have ESCOM dominating my life so much. So uh, I think all of us on a daily basis have to say, what are these big issues in my life uh, that uh, is affecting my life and I have no control over it? So how can I gain back control? But un until one know about possibilities, and that's where Trevor then says, start mixing with people who are already on the other side of life that are off the grid or who are traveling. Uh, I know, you know, in a small way for me, uh, my world changed when I got onto my first airplane and flew to a different country and walked around in the, in the streets of Paris and, and just experienced life as a South African from a different perspective. And when I came back, my mind was stretched and could never go back to the old ways of thinking again. Um, so you need to find ways to stretch people's minds to the new possibilities to such an extent and it has to be some sort of a very strong emotional uh, experience for them that it once it's stretched it won't go back and uh, i think that that that's where our solution to our politics in south africa also lies if we can just stretch people's minds to the possibility of clean governance uh, vote not because of tradition and culture and the wrongs of the past, but vote for the, poss uh, the possibilities of the future. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we don't even pay too much attention to it on this forum, but, uh, you know, the impact of technology is going to overtake us if we don't apply our minds to the possibilities. But a few people are, and a few people are going to reap the rewards with us still being stuck in the thinking of the, the past. Yeah, so I uh, will just then conclude with change the mindset, think possibilities versus thinking thinking victim. Great, thanks, Jasper. Agree, hundred percent. So you obviously got bumped. <laughs> I'm assuming it was uh, our friends uh, at Edcom, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all, all, all kind, all manner of things. Let's put it that way. Um, so. I was telling the story about the elephants, but I also, the vicious cycle that is very present in my mind at the moment is the one that's playing out at universities in South Africa. And uh, this is the story of students not having financial resources to pay for their studies. Uh, universities uh, needing to cover the cost of education and government uh, subsidizing to some extent, uh, but not sufficiently to cover all the costs. And, and it plays out and, and then add to that, the, the history of protest in our country as the language that speaks louder than any other language. 
And so what we have playing out now is uh, students wanting to, to, to get an education, remembering that that's their survival. And um, I, I am going to ask if we can just listen for a moment. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm talking to a blank screen. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, long weekend. <laughs> no problem, Lee. Uh, yeah, look, I, I think, you know, where, we, where we've gone is, you know, we started with, with, with Ed's, you know, examples of, of, you know, these spirals that take us down and then we've tried to flip it around and say, how do we, how do we pick these things back up again and, and change it? And, uh, you know, I, I love Sally's very personal, uh, you know, input on, on how she's, you know, managed to deal with, with some of the challenges that she's faced from a, you know, from a depression perspective. And I, I think it is, it is tough. You know, I'm not, I don't think anybody suggests that it's easy to break a vicious cycle. Um, but it does take action and it does take action of, of a different kind. I think, uh, you know, to, as, as we've said, you know, to the actions that have actually put us in those places to, to start off with. And, and yes, some of those factors are, are very definitely outside of our control. Um, you know, we talk about the power of utility. Yeah, we, we've got no control over what ESCOM does, but we do have an element of control about how we react to it. And, and I think that's for me where, um, you know, where, where it all starts. And, and Jasper spoke about mindset and, and I think mindset is, is absolutely key. And how do you change mindset? You, you change the input that, uh, um, that's coming in from, you know, what created that mindset in the first place. Um, and the only way to do that is, is to engage with different uh, people with different environments. And again, not suggesting that's necessarily an easy thing to do. Um, I think we do tend to get locked into into our environments and, and into our social circles and, and into even our societal environments. Um, and and to get a different perspective, one has to be prepared to get uncomfortable. I think you've got you know people might suggest that uh, you know a vicious cycle is uncomfortable. Of course, it's uncomfortable. Um, you know, no one wants to be in a in a, in a downward spiral. Um, but it it takes that that personal choice of doing something different as Sally mentioned. And I think that's for me so powerful. You know, it's, it's, you've got to, you've got to make that choice. You've got to choose to do something different. You've got to choose to, to see things differently. You've got to choose to react to things differently. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. So how do, how do we do it? You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, about engaging with the right people. It's about the people that we engage with, um, you know, offering them those choices. And uh, and I think at the end of the day, by offering someone a different choice, to think we we allow ourselves to think differently. Um, and, and I think that's absolutely key. Um, and it's not, uh, it's, it doesn't become a pity party. It becomes a, it becomes a challenge of how do we see things differently and how do we approach things differently. Um, and how do we react to things differently? And I think that's hopefully what, what we're providing to some extent here in the Wisdoms Chats, you know, challenging people to think beyond their normal paradigms, uh, think differently, you know, change the way they're thinking and, and, uh, and you know, maybe change some of those, those mindsets and those, those habits of thought. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, thanks, Ellie. Yeah, I get out of the victim space. I think it's, it's and again, uh, you know, not, not easy. But um, yeah, you said. Yeah, I think it's it's very difficult to sort of discuss in that when you're educated and have the advantage of an education. I think for people that haven't had the advantage of education, actually getting out of that pity part is is, is a lot harder. And and we shouldn't forget that that all of us here are, are talking for from a position of privilege. And if you haven't got privilege, you haven't got as many choices and options. And yeah, I think the thing is surround yourself with positive people. But if you're not had an education and you're not privileged, it's very difficult to surround yourself with positive, you know, with, a, with good positive people with a difference. So I think you know we, we have a biased viewpoint on this platform. Uh, agree, agreed, Ed. You know, the, uh, I see Trevor's in a vicious cycle with his cat at the moment. But 
<laughs> going around and around in circles. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, I couldn't agree more. You know, we have had people on on this forum who who have been in that in that state of of underprivilege, if I can call it that, and and have managed to work their way out of it almost single handedly. So it is possible. Um, again, I'm I'm not trying to trivialize it or or say that it's easy, but it is certainly possible. And you know, we've we've had people who've, who've proven that, and and people who continue to prove it. You know, um, I think worldwide, there's always somebody who manages to to pull themselves up by their bootstraps despite the odds, um, and you know, despite the the apparent lack of opportunity and apparent lack of education, and 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 do do some really amazing things. You know, and, and for me, that is that is an inspiration in itself and uh, and, and an opportunity. Uh, you know, I was just looking very quickly at at uh, uh, the macro scale. You know, countries with the fastest growing GDP in 2020. You know, believe it or not, Guyana was the, the country with the fastest growing GDP in 2020. I don't know why, um, and I would never have dreamt uh, that it would have been Guyana. But uh, but there you go. Uh, you know, and I think of I think of you know countries like you know South Korea and 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 some of those other Asian countries that have just uh, absolutely exploded in the last. 20 years um so and, and and from positions where people gave them no hope at all uh you know so you know if, if the governments you know get it right uh, and 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 it's been proven now in, in in i'll say a number of places uh if governments get it right things can happen incredibly fast in in the macro scale you know there's always this this excuse that the you know, the governments move so slowly and, you know, countries move so slowly. Well, you know, guess what? It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, and it just changes. It just takes that change of thinking, that change of way of doing things. And, and there I say, you know, stop the handouts and get productive. Um, really uh, is, is what it comes down to, uh, you know, from my perspective. And, and, you know, just go and look at the examples that have worked. Uh, you know, don't keep on following the examples that aren't working. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably my my thoughts to wrap it up. Um, so, anybody like to pick a topic for tomorrow? Uh, I think we need to break this vicious cycle <laughs> of heading down down these uh, the, these routes. Even though I think it's it's good to challenge us to challenge our, our, our minds and our thinking as as to how we change it and what we can do to change it. Um, but maybe we need to get ahead. Yeah, the, the other day I, I sort of said that someone asked me, was I an, ena an enabler or was I an, uh, an inhibitor? And I talked about the fact that sometimes, as an example, you can be too much. And I think you've just sort of um, touched on it there, you know, because you mentioned these people that have pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. But if you think about the normal distribution curve, they're outliers. So sometimes it's someone that's achieving fantastic things. Are they too far away from you? Do they set the bar too high to be an, an enabler? And in fact, they become an inhibitor. And I've talked about the fact that when I talk to people that are doing the Couch to 5K running program, I don't mention what I do because I think it puts some people off. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to explore whether whether we really are an, a, an inspiration to people or actually whether we put them off because they can't aspire to be that great or that different or that whatever. Does that make some sort of sense? Lee, Lee's looking very worried. So uh, if, if I can jump in here, Ed, I had exactly the same thought this morning. Um, and I was relating it to SND, um, whether we are stimulants or stimulated by others, um, or whether we are depressants or depressed or deflated by others. Hmm. And, and it wasn't an introspection on myself as to whether I'm a stimulant or I'm a depressant. Uh, I was just thinking about other individuals who do not stimulate me and who actually uh, depress me. I don't want to be around them. Um, and, and that thought came from having been uh, a week with old mates um, who were just through the roof 
absolute stimulants. I'd love to tell you some of the stories I came back with, uh, which were, were just phenomenal. And thinking about individuals um, who I, I really don't want to be around with uh, and, and almost ready to start stripping my, my social media accounts of those people who keep trying to get themselves in front of me on a daily basis. Um, I, that I want to uh, get away from them. Uh, so stimulant or depressant, uh, you used the word enabler. Are you an enabler? Uh, you used something as the flip side of it. I would think inhibitor. that... Inhibitor. Hmm? What did inhibitor. you say? Uh, I would have thought it would be a disabler is the flip of that. Um, but uh, it, it's quite interesting as a discussion. One other thing that I wanted to uh, perhaps share... I don't know the, in fact, I know nothing of the story of Elon Musk um, and how he went from where he was as a Pretoria schoolboy all the way through to uh, where he is today as I think he's the second wealthiest man in the world. Uh, that's something that I wanted to say. And then I, I, I thought this might be interesting. This, this was a book. Now, when I go away, I normally look at my bookshelf and say, okay, well, what have I been avoiding as a book? Um, and, and this was quite interesting. I've heard all about the Kabbalah from all of my Jewish mates who don't want to tell me anything. And I've been into New York, had a look at all the Hasidic Jews. Um, and I see them at the Wailing Wall doing all of that. And I thought, okay, let me take this one book that I've never, ever had a look at um, and try and read it. And, and, you know, uh, when, when Ed sort of brought up how we're in a privileged situation, uh, you go back and you, you read the story of before from the book of Genesis and how uh, the, the knowledge, which is the Kabbalah, comes through almost from interpretations from the earliest days of humanity and how people have been wrestling for all of those times. And then they put a date to it 2000 years ago, which is an interesting date. Uh, and then you follow through how people wrestle with exactly the topic that we were talking about today um, is how, how do people actually get in touch with the abundance of the world um, from their particular positions and, and how do different people like the Elon Musks of this world um, and, and Bezos and Bill Gates and um, these type of guys actually tap into this abundance? Um, so it, it's been interesting reading. Uh, I, w I won't give you my interpretation until I've completely gone through it. And I'll ask Ed to just review my my interpretation of it, because I'm certain he's going to knock me out uh, and have a completely right. different view. Okay, great. Thanks. So, enable or inhibit? Uh, Lee, you wanted to add something? You were just saying chess? <laughs> She's just saying chess. All right. So, uh, enable or inhibit, uh, and we'll see you in the morrow, hopefully enabled. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye.